reminder that this will be recorded and it could be faced on uh, placed on our public facing Purdue Global website or, of course, uh, within the AC ASC webinar website um, for others to see. So do keep that in mind as you're interacting with each other in the webinar today. Um, that said, I want to welcome you all to tonight's webinar hosted by the Learning for Success Center. Our presenter tonight is Dr. Sarah Brown, a graduate faculty member in the School of Nursing. Dr. Brown is here to share a 10-step approach to managing our stress through healthy living choices. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to her now. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Welcome everyone this evening. Thank you for joining me. Um, I do appreciate your time this evening, and I hope that you're able to learn something in what we're going to discuss this evening. I think it's um, when I was approached for, um, you know, this topic, I feel that it, it couldn't come at a better time, you know, especially um, for our students here at PG as well. So just some learning outcomes, some things that I hope that um, will be conveyed during um, our time together this evening is that you'll understand the importance of effective stress management, what the value is for healthy living choices, as well as um, 10 steps just for managing um, stress in no particular order. But, um, you know, hopefully the, the take home message will be that some of those things you'll be able to implement into your daily lives. And you'll see that um, it's not something that takes a whole lot of time and or effort to do. So I hope you find these things of benefit to, to your health and overall success in learning as well. All right, so the advent of online learning has definitely made achieving a degree more accessible to many of us. You know, um, when I first started um, in nursing school many, many years ago, um, going back over two decades, it was brick and mortar and that's the only option you had. So the fact that we have fast forward to 100% um, online learning in most degree programs, this has really enabled um, so many to, to be able to achieve degrees that may not have been possible to them before. So pursuing an online degree is appealing to many busy professionals as well. You know, the excitement of being able to achieve higher education, but still be able to work and manage a family if you have one and your daily life as well. So earning a college degree in and of itself can absolutely be stressful no matter what your age is. I teach in the school of nursing and I have as young as 18 all the way up until, you know, um, students in their 70s um, pursuing higher education. So um, it can be stressful for anyone, whether it's in person or online. So, you know, tonight we need to discuss some effective stress management techniques that can not only help you in online learning, but in your life overall as a whole. All right, so let's talk about those 10 steps that I was um, referring to in the previous slide. First, stay social. Next, make sure you're getting lots of sleep. Exercise, of course, as we know, is always on the list. Mindfulness, we'll talk more about this when we get to that particular slide, but understanding what mindfulness is, it's kind of a new catch term. Eat well, get organized, manage your time wisely, get help if you need it, take breaks, as well as check in with yourself. Now, in step number one in staying social, because online colleges and universities make it so easy for you, you to immerse yourself in your education, so much so that you may often forget or put off keeping in touch with your family and friends. 
So it's funny, there is a, you know, it's similar to an oxymoron to stay social in the advent of online learning is you feel like you may spend a lot of time in what you do every day and being on the computer to get your coursework done. But you also need to make sure that you're not isolating yourself when you're pursuing your degree online. Staying social, even just a phone call, is one of the easiest ways for stress management techniques to incorporate into your day to day. You know, with teaching online, and I also um, work primarily online as well. The last thing I want to do is get back on a computer or get back on my phone to text someone. So sometimes just picking up the phone and making a quick call. And I think some things tend to get lost in translation. You know, if you're sending an email or a text to a friend or a family member, that getting that voice interaction is so important to stay connected as well. Sleep. We've heard this probably since day one, that making sure that you relieve stress by doing something as simple as getting enough sleep. Now, sometimes that's easier said than done. I know when I was pursuing my um, doctorate of nursing practice, 100% online, oh, I could just skip a little bit of sleep, maybe do work a little bit longer, get that extra assignment done, whether or not it was 11 p.m. or midnight, knowing very well that I should probably be getting more sleep. So this is not only critical for online learning success, but keeping manageable um, stress levels as well. Now the NSF or National Sleep Foundation recommends seven to nine hours of sleep for young adults and adults alike. So be, if you're between the ages of 18 and 64, then you should be getting somewhere between seven and nine hours of sleep a night. Now, there was a study that was done that demonstrated that college students went to sleep later with online learning compared to live attendance. And that makes perfect sense. You know, if you're going to a brick and mortar university or um, community college locally, then you have set hours to where you're attending that school. You may stay up a little bit to complete an assignment, but those that face to face interaction for those courses may not occur on a daily basis. When you have the flexibility of online learning, you may say, just as I did as a DNP student, hey, I'll just stay up a little bit later so I can get this assignment done. Now, exercise, of course, important for daily lives, online learning, managing stress alike, may not always easily fit into your very busy schedule. And, you know, this is regardless of whether you're online or just overly busy, but it is a time tested way to manage stress for a reason. And it works. And the reason why it works is exercise is a natural antidepressant. It raises endorphin levels and makes you feel good. You may not have that initial motivation to do the exercise, albeit whether it's just going for a walk or if you are a member of a local gym, getting there is half the battle, but once you're there, you'll be glad that you are and you'll feel so much better once you're done working out. So even a brisk 10 minute walk can boost endorphins. These are your body's feel good trans neurotransmitters. It will improve your mood. And also it's a stress management technique that's not only good for online education, but for your body and mind as well. And I know as a resident of Florida, we're getting what we call um, a cold front currently. So I am able to enjoy a lot more outdoor time with um, in the 80s instead of the 90s. So. All right, so here's that newer catchphrase or term that I was referring to um, at the beginning of the presentation. Mindfulness. What is mindfulness? It's maintaining a moment-to-moment -moment awareness of where you are and what you're currently doing. In learning, for example, it means that you are focused or completely immersed in the project in front of you. Now, you can actually train your brain to be more mindful. 
So like anything else, it just takes practice to do so. So, you know, for example, if you're in an assignment and you find that you start to wander off and think, what am I going to make for dinner? When, what time is it? I need to go pick up the kids from school. You need to bring yourself back to center focus and retrain your brain to get back onto the current task at hand. So um, mindfulness is a great practice. It's similar along the lines of those who practice perhaps meditation or yoga when you're completely immersed in the body and mind simultaneously. All right, eating well, which this is probably, I would say, one of the harder things to do on the list. And the reason for that is it's very easy when you're online and you're learning and you're, you just go to the kitchen cabinet and say, I'm just going to grab a, a quick snack. And um, we call it like comfort food. Um, to give you an example, my, um, my niece is 18. She just recently started community college and she sent me a, a text message the other day and she said, Auntie Sarah, I don't feel good. I don't like to eat breakfast. Can I just take some sugar tablets or eat some candy? And do you think that would help me feel better because I just feel jittery? Probably sugar was a little bit low. Skipped breakfast. We tend to go for maybe those high sugar coffees in the morning with caffeine as well and forget that we should probably pack it with some protein um, rich foods. So I advised her, mm, let's avoid the sugar and try a, a protein pack, whether it's nuts and cheese or, you know, they make plenty of these little packs at the grocery stores now. You can even pick them up from your local coffee shop and they have um, perhaps a hard boiled egg in them. And an hour later, she's like, Auntie Sarah, you are so smart. I feel great, you know, so I'm always happy to help with that advice. But just make sure that you're looking for those foods that won't decrease your energy as well as your academic performance. So feed that online education with healthy food choices. So your body and your GPA will definitely thank you. All right, get organized. Probably the second hardest thing to do on the list, you know, between academics and your everyday life, I'm sure everyone is very, very busy, especially with online learning. So try to keep your desk neat. I won't show you mine right now. I can give the advice, but I don't always take it. But create folders on your computer, making sure you're mapping out your term and setting reminders for important dates. You know, with utilization of what we call smartphones, you know, even, even to come to this meeting this evening for my presentation, I get a reminder on my phone. Hey, don't forget, you've got to do this at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, you know, we get so busy and bogged down with everything else that we're trying to, you know, get through um, just one day at a time that it is nice to have those reminders set for important dates. And, you know, that's important in online learning in the classroom as well. And that's why it's my position as an instructor to send out those weekly reminders. Hey, don't forget, there's a quiz this week and take advantage of, you know, study time and make time for yourself. And once you get organized, you'll find that you'll be more successful as well. So it looks like Kathy just put a comment in the chat. Let's take a look. Okay, my phone calendar and reminders are a lifesaver for school and personal life. And that is so true. Now, once you get organized and stay organized, you will naturally feel those stress levels reduce. And again, your GPA will thank you as well. Very true. So manage your time wisely, you know, from the time you get up early to prioritize tasks and avoid distractions and setting goals, this will help you achieve that structure. You know, we become proficient in what we do every day. So if you set a schedule for yourself, then you'll find that you'll get used to that schedule and you'll find that you become more efficient as well. This is both in your academics as well as your personal tasks. 
there may be some interjection in your day to day that goes outside the norm, whether or not it's, you know, having to study for an exam or that you have an assignment due. So make sure that you're managing time wisely and that you're inserting time for those things that may come up as well unexpectedly. This is one of those tasks that really takes time. You know, it's easier to say, hey, you should just manage your time more wisely, but sometimes it's harder to do. But once you do, you will see yourself be able to carry this particular task for a lifetime. Get help if you need it. You know, um, even pre-pandemic, this um, started as, you know, becoming more self-aware that if you need professional help, that you'll, you know, perhaps feel better mentally and physically. You know, mental health is so important and such an important aspect of self-care. And you'll see that many online colleges and universities are even equipped with, you have an advisor reach out to your advisor. When I have a student come to me, perhaps with a personal issue, the first question I ask is, I appreciate you telling me as your instructor, perhaps maybe an assignment was overdue because they had a family emergency. My first question is, have you reached out to your advisor? Does your advisor know what's going on in your life? Does your advisor know that maybe you need some help? This is so important and this is their job. This is what they're here for. They're here to support you. And at PG, you should have an advisor and send them an email and say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this or I had this happen, you know, um, with, you know, daily life and things that happen. You know, you just never know when you may need to call on someone. What, um, what the pandemic did, um, fast forward as far as seeing this support, especially from, you know, for me, from a nursing perspective, is the advent of more access to online healthcare as well. You know, many times insurances aren't on board with supporting mental health um, you know, for, for people that maybe weren't able to leave their house, but when the pandemic, something positive out of, um, what has transpired in the last, you know, almost two years, um, here in America is the allowance of, you know, patients to seek self-care help online, which is a fantastic opportunity because it obviously reduces the risk for, you know, transmission of a disease process that some people, you know, may have suffered from anxiety as a result of it. Um, so Christina is mentioning, let's take a look. I observed a turnover of advisors and in one term I had four. Is this common? You know, that's a great question. Um, and that would be a question that would be, um, you know, probably better served by your um, program chair, you know, to be honest with you. I know that I have some students that may have a turnover in advisement. And, you know, sometimes, you know, students may struggle, you know, with that turnover as a result, because they want to know, hey, this, you know, this person knew me already and knew, you know, what my personal situation was. Why do I have to explain that all over again, you know, to the next person? But, you know, perhaps that advisor may have had something come up. I'm, I'm not really sure. So um, I, I feel like that may be best served by um, a discussion with your chair. And, you know, um, our, our program recently, um, new advisor too, after having the same one and right. So it can, you know, sometimes it's disappointing. I, I, I always tell, um, you know, students I teach in the women's health program. I said, you know, you're used to, two people in life, maybe three from an online learning perspective. I always say you're used to your hairdresser and your um, healthcare provider, and maybe third would be your advisor from a student perspective. So I can see how that could be, you know, disheartening to some to not be able to have access to the same advisor. But know that, you know, your instructors are always there to um, support you and support your needs as well.
well. And more often you'll have that same instructor, at least for that one particular term. So, okay, great. Melinda's sharing the link for education advising, and then you can always connect with them here. That's great because they will be able to pass that information on, you know, to the next person as well. It's always great to communicate. Very good. Now, finding the right experts will also equip you with the tools that you need for stress management. You know, as I mentioned before, becoming proficient in what you do every day, our, um, you know, our advisors, mental health experts, um, universities and colleges that are equipped with, you know, perhaps um, coaching as well, there's always someone out there to support you. So reach out and get that help that, you know, if you feel that that's something that you need because it's so important in self-care and it's okay to realize that it is something that you may need help with, you know, um, it, from a healthcare perspective, you know, we, you know, perhaps I manage a patient with high blood pressure or um, high cholesterol and alongside that now is mental health. Because if you're not taking care of your mental health and well-being, then you're not able to, to care for others. And, you know, it'd be more difficult for you to be successful in, in learning as well. All right, take breaks. Sitting in one spot for hours on end as you learn online is really not good for your mind or body. And your body will start to tell you, you know, you'll feel yourself correct your posture. You want your feet planted, you know, both feet on the floor. You know, um, you'll feel yourself want to take or need a stretch break. You may feel some of those muscles start twitching and going, okay, you've been in this same position hunched over the computer for too long that your body's going to start telling you that you know it's time for a stretch break so that's a good opportunity to just stand and and stretch you know stretching is fantastic and you know it opens up the mind and the body and it's so it, it's such an easy thing to do let's see I, I think we have somebody adding something in the chat again I know I'm going back and forth Okay, what will happen if you struggle with opening up to your advisor about what's going on in your in your life? You know, all I can do is stress the importance of, you know, even reaching out to your instructor if that's someone that you feel more comfortable with or utilization of that email that um, Linda provided or that phone number to see if you can find someone um, that you may feel comfortable having that conversation with. Um, call a friend and meet for a quick lunch break if that's possible or even go for a walk. So a lot of these tie in, you know, taking breaks ties in obviously with exercise and staying social. If you have that time to do that, then absolutely do it. It doesn't have to be a complicated task. And it's something that, you know, if you just take that time to do, you'll find yourself being mindful and coming back to center and being able to better focus on whatever task that is that's in front of you. And let's take a look. I'm getting lots of lots of good chat and conversation. So, okay, Melinda is offering another great resource in the student assistance program as well. And you know, um, I've had uh, several students come to me in the past about um, situations and I will refer them, you know, to these great resources that we have at PG because um, student success is one of our, you know, I feel it's a core focus here at, at PG. I think that's why I've been here for six and a half years because I do feel like that support is, it does shine through this particular university and I have you know, taught for other universities as well. And I feel that um, PG really has your back when it comes to ensuring student success. Okay, check in with yourself. And this one overlaps um, with reaching out as well. Um, I do remember um, from a personal perspective, 
where I, I was approached for a project and, and I initially, of course, you know, we're, we're kind of, I'm kind of a say yeser, you know, I'll, I'll say yes to anything and I'll figure out the rest later, even if it um, comes to, you know, having to put myself in, in a stressful situation. And um, with that particular project, I ended up saying, you know what, I, as much as I didn't want to, I, I went back and I said, I just can't do this right now. And that was probably one of the first times in life that I've ever done that. But I think with everything else that's going on that, you know, checking in with yourself and not overextending, you know, what you're trying to achieve and, and saying no is sometimes it's okay to, to say no, maybe not to an assignment or taking an exam or something of that nature. But if somebody just adds that extra layer and you just can't do it, then just say no or not right now or you know maybe if we could table this project for later or I will be able to get to it but it it's not in the immediate future so um, just keep that in consideration because you have you can only do what you can do and if you don't then you know unfortunately all that weight is going to come down on you so the stress that you feel when you pursue any kind of higher education whether it's online or offline can definitely creep up on you and i think that's what happened to me so some signs that you may notice are difficulty sleeping and remember that seven to nine hours from the national sleep foundation is where you want to be you know increasing heart rate depression anxiety or poor concentration concentration, you know, and poor concentration is very detrimental to your learning. If you're trying to be mindful and be focused on, you know, that current task in front of you, but you're not able to concentrate, then you need to take a moment and say, what's going on here? I need to understand why I'm feeling this way. Do I have too much on my plate? And what can I take off? Or what can I, you know, um, say this one is just going to have to wait until I get through, you know, what I'm experiencing right now. So if you put in those stress management techniques, one through nine, that work best for you, you'll see that it's not a one size fits all, but it's a matter of being able to find which methods work best for you in, you know, making sure that you check in with yourself to reduce that stress that you're feeling. All right. And then, okay, Chad, just going to suggest that Melinda and you're welcome. Um, okay. All right. Um, I can take over here a little bit, some slides here at the end, um, just to show you how to find the Academic Success Center. And then I want to make sure I open up the floor for some questions. So let me just run through these real quickly. So um, again, you can always find the Academic Success Center where We'll have a recording of this webinar later. You can watch, you can find other recordings um, and all of those learning resources right there under My Studies and click on Academic Success Center. Um, it's also in your Brightspace courses under the Help menu. When you come into the Academic Success Center, we always recommend making the Learning for Success Center your first stop. And so you can find that one listed right under the centers and click on it to go right into the Learning for Success area. Um, in that area, you can find a lot of things to help you continue doing some of the things we started talking about here, like managing your time, um, and things like that. Uh, you'll find a lot of resources and those sorts of things by looking for this box. Look for the little tomato or um, some people think it looks more like an apple, whatever you prefer uh, to find some of those resources. You can also meet live with a tutor, and we do have some of our peer tutors from the Learning for Success Center here tonight. Um, I don't know if any of them are comfortable flipping on their camera and giving a, a quick wave, um, but Kathy is here, and Colton, and Carolina. And so during our live tutoring hours, you're welcome to come in and look for any of these tutors. Hi, Kathy! Uh, with their light set to green and that knock on door button. And you can just click the knock on door button 
a little chat window will pop up so you can let them know maybe why you're there, um, what question you have. But from there, they can invite you into a room that works really similar to this space where you can be face to face on camera and talk through whatever you're needing some help with. Um, our peer tutors are really great at helping with time management. I know that's a big part of stress management, I think, is, is tackling that time. And so they can help you take a look at your schedule. We have a time management calculator um, they can help you with. And so they can be a really first good first step in just figuring out how to get a handle on all of your various responsibilities and juggling your coursework and your family life and your work and, and anything else that you might have going on. Um, next, I just want to highlight a couple of our other upcoming webinars that we have now. Um, discussion Board Secrets will be tomorrow night and then again next week on Thursday as well. This is a webinar we try to do the first Thursday after any new terms start. Um, and the focus is really on trying to help students figure out um, how to navigate their courses and handle that first discussion board, post to it, um, and all of that. The next week we have have a learn to edit and proofread. This one is presented by the Writing Center. And then on Tuesday of, of the week, that week, we also have basic computer literacy for students. Um, and so I've I got a link in here. I have a takeaway at the end with all these links active. Um, so you can be sure to add these to your calendar and attend any that look like they'll be useful for you. Um, it looks like I just totally left out the question slides in this <laughs> slide set tonight. So I apologize for that, Dr. Brown. But I do want to make sure I open up the floor um, for any questions that you guys have about any of these 10 steps uh, that we learned about tonight or anything else that we covered, you're welcome to pop onto your microphone and ask a question, or you can type it into the chat window. In the meantime, I'll let you guys think about some questions. I want to be sure I'm sharing all the links. So if you didn't already, I've got um, the attendant sign in. We're also doing an exit survey, trying to get a little information um, from students about the times of day, uh, days of the week, things like that, that are uh, the most convenient for you to attend webinars like this, and also uh, the kind of topics you'd like to see covered in future webinars. So uh, be sure to take the exit survey. And then last but not least, I know you're all eager to get the takeaway for this valuable webinar. Um, this takeaway, file um, is a, a PDF. It's going to have the same slides we covered tonight, but um, any links in it will be active. So there at the end, you can link directly to the uh, webinar calendar to get those added on um, and things like that. So and just have these slides to review, give yourself that plan, make sure you're doing all of these 10 steps. So I'll be quiet for a minute and make sure I'm leaving room for questions. Well, I think Dr. Brown was just very thorough in covering all of those 10 steps. I definitely feel more equipped with some <laughs> strategies that I can use um, and start implementing in my life to manage my stress a little better. I think right now as we're headed into the holidays, it's just it's a great time to be thinking about this and really making sure we're doing all we can to, to manage our stress. So thank you all so much for making time to attend. Oh, it looks like we have a question. Um, I have trouble focusing. How can I control that? That is a great question. And um, you'll see, too, in the slides um, that there is um, one of the websites that I utilized was um, from mindful.org. And that website has a plethora of information on bringing yourself, like I mentioned before, back to center. You know, and honestly, if you're having trouble focusing, then step away from the task. Whatever is deviating you from that current task, go take care of that. If it's 
maybe the dog in the background saying, hey, I need to go outside and play for a few minutes. You're not paying attention to me. Go do that and then come back to the task. And that may help with your focus because you're removing those external barriers from whatever, you know, is, is causing that distraction. Yeah, that's great advice. Any other questions? You're welcome. I like to think that focus is kind of like a, a practice to like mindfulness. We have to practice to get better at it. So sometimes I think it's helpful to say, okay, I'm just going to focus for the next 10 minutes <laughs> and just give all my attention to this task, you know, for the next 10 minutes and then set a little timer and take a break and, you know, give myself then come back another 10 minutes. I always find that to be helpful if I'm just really struggling sometimes to focus. And that's such a good point, you know, because I think we have an unrealistic expectation of how long we should be in one task that that's when our body starts to say. So I feel like 10 minutes is a fantastic amount of time, you know, and then you could even increase that, you know, as you find that you get to that 10 minutes, hey, let me just add another five on. And then when you start to lose focus again, then okay, I've reached my limit. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly right. The mind just wanders, go into all those different things we have. Yeah, it definitely takes practice. Stick with it. You'll get better and better at it. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording, but please, if there are any more questions, don't hesitate to type them in or um, pop on the microphone.